Okay, so Obi-Wan Episode 3, you know the drill, if you haven't seen it, this will contain spoilers. And as always, I'm Al, this is a Geek In Review, so let's get to it. So last week we're left on the cliffhanger revelation, well, for Obi-Wan, because we already knew that Anakin Skywalker was still alive. And I have to say, I'm glad we're getting Episode 3 a few days after Episodes 1 and 2, but it is a little odd that we're now halfway through the season already, because it's only 6 episodes. But anyway, it almost with Obi-Wan still trying to contact Qui-Gon, so surely this is going to pay off at some point. But, of course, he's more focused on Reva's revelation about Anakin. But the question is, how did she know because it's not really indicated generally from the rest of the Star Wars films and TV shows that this was common knowledge. I'll get a little theory about Reva, I'll explain it in a second, but yeah, that does raise a lot of questions. And straight away we get Vader this week after the end of last week's episode, we knew he was coming and oh, what an intro, it's the intro that you'd want and that you'd hope for. But really, does Darth Vader ever do bad introductions? And Obi-Wan, of course, knows he's coming, and we get to see a little bit more of the Empire side in this episode. Reva blames the Grand Inquisitor's death on Obi-Wan, and to be honest, he doesn't care. And all she seems interested in is becoming the Grand Inquisitor herself, but I think there's more than that to her. Why is she so angry and focused on Obi-Wan? I've got this theory, if you remember Nari from the first episode, the Jedi that found Obi-Wan in the desert, what if Reva found him after Order 66 when maybe she was a little bit older and he turned her away and that sort of led her to the gutter and then into the hands of the Empire and the Inquisitors? I don't know, I just think there's got to be more to her hate for Obi-Wan than we're seeing in this show so far. And little Leia's back as well and we get a great scene about her question Obi-Wan about how the Force works. I liked how he explained it to her, I'm not going to ruin it if you haven't seen the episode. but. But yeah, I like that they're having conversations of the Force, because in all the Star Wars stuff, they never really go into how this works for Jedis. But he manages to fix the market and opportunity droid, and once they arrive on the planet, they've also got a great back and forth from the discussion of how everyone's not good or not evil, and hey man, if that's not about Anakin Skywalker, I don't know what is. Also, have you noticed this show loves a sweeping ship shot, and that's quite hard to say, you get it a few times in this, with Obi-Wan landing on the planet and then Reva landing on Darth Vader's planet as well. Not that I'm complaining, it looks good. I know there's a little bit of dodgy CGI in the first two episodes, but I don't think it was that bad. So obi wan still following the directions given to him last week, which leads literally to the middle of nowhere. And I like when they do run into one of the locals when he's running towards his sort of car thing, he hides his lightsaber. And if you didn't hear it, that is Seth Rogen that's voicing the alien, who appears to be pro-Empire, and yeah, they are making the MAGA statement in comparison. And Star Wars is going to piss some people off with this, it didn't bother me, I know they've already pissed off some fans with a statement that they made earlier on in the week, but I'm going to get to that at the end of the video. But whatever man, I enjoyed it. But while they're on their way back into town, they end up giving a bunch of stormtroopers a lift as well. And they're looking for a Jedi, but I don't think this is Obi-Wan because we've seen in the first two episodes that his picture had been circulated everywhere, so it's got to be someone else. But the scene where Obi-Wan fucks up Leia's name and calls her her actual name is great. I did think for a second they were going to play it for comedy, and I'm really glad that they didn't. And Leia somehow senses that Obi-Wan knew her real mother Padme, so does that mean that she's going to sense Luke as well? I don't know. And the young Leia does have questions about where she's come from and who her real parents are. So I do wonder what Bail Organa told her. I wonder if this is going to come back and bite him and it's just something that's going to be set up later on down the road. But I doubt it. But anyway, Obi-Wan talks about the Jedi taking him when he was a youngster. And man, I'm not going to go into spoilers yet, but that is going to be important for the rest of this season. Not for him particularly. But the Jedi recruitment method is going to come into question in this show. And yeah, I'm a little disappointed they didn't use the lightsaber on the guards, but we've already seen a bit of this fight in the trailer where I'm using the blaster. And this show isn't shy on killing stormtroopers either, they're getting back into the habit of just killing the minions. 
and they both get saved by the Imperial officer leading the stormtroopers who executes her own men to get Obi-Wan and Leia out of there. Now we do learn that there is a, some sort of underground railroad for rebels or Jedis and we get an exposition dump on what the Empire is up to with force sensitive children. We get a deep easter egg with Quinlan Voss, Obi-Wan gets a sense of guilt I guess because he's not really contributing to the fight against the Empire and the fact that they mention the Empire is up to something with force sensitive children, surely this is setting up a story further down the line in Obi-Wan or maybe on another show in Star Wars? But we also, as I said earlier on in the episode, get a look at the inside of the Empire and this Imperial officer is someone who signed up, had complete faith in the dream in the Empire, a bit like Miggs Mayfield and Mando and then it's all sort of come undone for them and I do love when we see this because the Empire in the original films was just shown as the bad guys wherein, if you've ever read the expanded universe or the comics, you know that there's much more of Shades of Grey they're not really leaning into it too much in this show because most of the Empire stuff we're seeing is from the Inquisitor's point of view. But yeah, I like when they do this that not everyone that wears the uniform might necessarily be a bad guy. And then Vader shows up and man, this is prime Vader. This is what we've been waiting for ever since that end scene at Rogue One. And this is a showdown that could change Star Wars. No, because he runs off, and while they do meet up and there is a lot of tension between these two, there isn't a huge amount of dialogue. And you get the sense that Vader is really playing with Obi-Wan here. And what a theme throughout this battle. I'm so glad that John Williams is back for this show. And Darth Vader gets absolutely brutal in this fight. This is maybe the most adult Star Wars has ever been forever. And Vader really wants to peel layers off of his old master. I mean, the bit in the fire, I didn't know when that was going to stop. I thought that was going to keep going. They're going to chuck Obi-Wan in the back to tank. But this is how you build tension, Star Trek. That's all I'm going to say. But while Vader is chasing Obi-Wan, Reva is after Leia and she sees all the right and left by Quinlan Voss and the other members of the underground. So again, I think that might be a setup for something that's coming in the future. But the episode ends with Obi-Wan getting away and Leia getting captured by Reva. So next week is going to be very interesting. And this ending is huge because the Empire now have Leia, so will Vader meet his own daughter and not know? I had a fair idea that she was going to get caught because how else would the confrontation between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader happen again if Obi-Wan's on the run for him? He's got to face him at some point and hey, we know that's happening and I just hope there's a little bit more dialogue when it does but man, this could go some interesting places with the Empire having Leia at this age. Now we get a lot of big idea drops in this episode like I say there's maybe a few setups for Obi-Wan or other shows down the road the Jedi abducting children, yeah, that's going to be big. Yeah, there's going to be critics this episode because of the whole thing about the far right, and I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the shit that Moses Ingram is getting for being in this show. Personally, I love Reva. I don't really understand why people don't like the character. She's a great Star Wars villain. She's brutal. She looks completely different when she's angry as opposed to when she does when she's talking to someone. It's absolutely crazy. I don't think I've ever seen Moses Ingram in anything before this, but I'm definitely going to check out her stuff. And if you're someone that doesn't like the character of Reva, that's fine. If you're someone that doesn't like what they're doing with Reva, that's fine. But don't give someone shit for doing their job at the end of the day. But anyway, that's the serious stuff out of the way. I do like the pace of the show and we've got some really decent stuff in this episode. Reva did feel a little bit left out and flat after the first two episodes, I'm not going to lie. But I'm still enjoying it and as I've said quite a lot, I'm enjoying all the Empire stuff that we're getting. But my question for you guys here is, we've been waiting for Anakin and Obi-Wan to meet up again since Revenge of the Sith came out in 2005. And was this worth it? Sure, Darth Vader was amazing and the fire torture scene was absolutely top notch, but I sort of expected more interaction between the two. I know we're going to get it, but I just wanted more to be honest. But I want to know what you guys think 
let me know in the comments below or you can follow me on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews. Also let me know if you're still enjoying Obi-Wan as well, what are you looking forward to? I'm going to do a video on Reva because let's say I've got a few deep theories on why I think she's so pissed off at Obi-Wan. So if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and if you've made it this far, like the video as well. My name's Al, thanks for watching.